Group A. It's the host nation group, Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal, and Netherlands. On paper, I don't think anywhere near the most powerful group. The host, Qatar, I called one of their games a few weeks back. Uh, they played Canada. It didn't look anywhere near the level that's required to compete at a World Cup. Ecuador, 44th ranked team in the world. Simon, I'm sure you've seen them a lot. A team that's kind of turned things around, but struggled a little bit in terms of form and especially scoring goals in 2022. Senegal, a team that had Dark Horse written all over it. Now with questions around Sadio Mane, I'm not sure where you guys think that Senegal may fall. And Louis van Gaal's Netherlands, the eighth ranked team in the world, a team that uh, has largely been competitive over recent times, especially under Van Gaal, unbeaten under their new manager, 11 wins and four draws since he took over. But there are still some questions in the side for the three-time World Cup runner-up. Jake, we'll start with you. What do you make of this group? I mean, Qatar's a long shot to win the group at plus 1452, plus 546 for Ecuador to win the group. Senegal, plus 551. Netherlands, no surprise, the favorite at minus 234. Um, yeah, it's hard to disagree with the market. Um, I think I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, the Netherlands and a big believer in them. I don't think they'll go all the way and win it this time around. I think this, they've got a nice blend of, uh, of youth and experience in that squad, but I do think that youth needs an extra tournament. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think it's a toss-up between Senegal and Ecuador. And I think the key, really, um, will be Sadio Mane's fitness and how many games of the group he's, he will miss. Um, there's been reports today that he's going to be definitely missing the first game, um, which is obviously against the Netherlands. So a game that maybe they might have expected to lose anyway, so it might not be too detrimental if he's back for game two. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'm interested to hear what Simon thinks because personally, I think Ecuador could be a bet at that price to uh, to qualify. You're getting plus 108. Um, yeah, from a South American perspective, are you, are you quite confident that Ecuador can get the better of Senegal? Yeah, I think look, I think I think it's both Senegal and Ecuador. I think I think Holland, yeah, fairly are the favourites in this group. But I think whoever qualifies out of Senegal and Ecuador have a decent chance of kind of doing something, you know, upsetting a couple of teams in the knockout rounds potentially. Uh, I really like Cisse as the Senegal manager. I think he does a really good job setting up his side. So uh, obviously uh, Mane will be a massive loss for them. But I do think Senegal get the most of what they have. Um, to a large extent, which is positive. Uh, with Ecuador, for me, the question with Ecuador is, do they have a goal scorer? Ena Valencia is kind of top goal scorer, doing well, you know, all-time top goal scorer for Ecuador, doing well in Turkey this year. Um, but for me, that's the, the area of the field where they're kind of least exciting. Because the thing about this Ecuador team is they're very young, they're very energetic, they're, you know, I think people have misinterpreted the way they play. Obviously, look, last five or six games, they haven't scored. So, you know, take a lot of this with a pinch of salt. You know, that gives some immediate context to this, what I'm saying. But in qualifying, they overwhelm teams. And, and the only team to outplay Brazil for 45 minutes in World Cup qualifying was Ecuador. And they destroyed Colombia. They destroyed Uruguay. So when it clicks for Ecuador, they're incredible to watch. They've got a lot of pace out wide. Now, obviously, Bayron Castillo, you may have seen, isn't, isn't been picked in the Ecuador squad. He's the player who was involved in the, the issues with the registration. Ecuador basically decided not to take him because they were worried they might get dock points if they did. They weren't quite sure with the, the ruling. So he's going to be a miss left back, uh, sorry, right back. But they've got lots of pace out wide. Plata is really good on the right wing. I think he could have a bit of a breakout tournament, really tricky, direct, skillful winger. You've got Estupinian attacking from left back. Moises Caicedo, pretty much the best central midfielder in the Premier League. If you look at certain metrics, really, really impressive for Brighton. Um, Piero Hincapié in defence, I think, again, is has had a few shaky games in, in the Bundesliga, but is a very, very good young defender, ball playing defender. So there's lots of good parts. And collectively, what they do is they're very... Um, they press very collectively. They don't play a particularly high line, but when the when the ball's there, they're very energetic. Uh, and their midfielders as well are very comfortable receiving when they're a little bit isolated, turning out and that kind of stuff. So I think I think if, if Ecuador, the thing is Alfaro, the coach as well, traditionally has been quite conservative. And it's been a good ma a match between Ecuador and Alfaro because Alfaro is quite defensive and Ecuador in, instinctively quite attacking. So it's kind of, they found the right balance. Now, obviously it goes the wrong way. You get an attacking side trying to be over defensive and things can potentially fall apart. So I think if Ecuador are confident, uh, and I think the first game is going to be key because Qatar have been preparing for 10 years for this game. 
um, and, and Ecuador are going to be the opening team, young side. So I think there's going to be nerves potentially on both sides in that one. And I think who, if Ecuador get the win in that, that one, they'll be off to a flyer. But Qatar are actually decent. You know, they've been competitive. They got to the semi-final of the Gold Cup in CONCACAF. They were competitive in the Copa America. So I think they could surprise. You know, they're, they're not going to blow anyone away, but they've got a really good coach and they're very well, you know, well tight knit group. So um, I think that opening game will tell us a lot. Um, but I do like Senegal as well. So I think Ecuador or Senegal could potentially be a bit of dark horses in this tournament. Andrew? Yeah, nothing much to add to that. Um, I was actually going to suggest Qatar under 2.5 points at minus 123 um, appeal to me, but um, Simon's now convinced me that they're quite good. So perhaps that's not a good suggestion. <laughs> but um, I, I think perhaps as well, I mean, Senegal at plus 112 to get under 3.5 points. If, if Mane misses the tournament, basically, I think that could actually be a realistic possibility, but obviously we don't know about him. But um yeah, there's there's some there's some possible bets there, but I think so much hinges on his availability that it's a very tough call as we sort of sit here record this uh, at the moment. Uh, I can tell you, having called the Canada Qatar match, like I said a month ago, I think they were in good form a year, two years ago. They, they simply just don't like. Look, they picked up games just about against everyone that will take one under twenty three teams, B sides, whatever. Um, they're all domestic based. And I understand home nations have typically done well in, in world cups, only South Africa, the only nation to not host nation, not to advance from the group, but there's nothing normal about this world cup. And there's nothing normal about this Qatari side either. Um, I think Ecuador to your point, Simon plays in a very similar matter, a manner than Senegal. This is a combative side. If you watch them in the African cup of nations, they have a very, you know, you know, aggressive physical, midfield it's just whether or not they they put enough emphasis on attack but you know i think that makes it a very competitive game the under for ecuador senegal i'll be all over that no matter what ecuador hasn't scored a goal like you said simon their last three games but there's not much between these two sides D does the spine strong spine of senegal outweigh the strength that ecuador has down the flanks I, it's a really intriguing matchup for me and it's really interesting to me that we've all basically said that this is Netherlands, you know, they're going to go on to win this group. Is everyone really convinced with this Netherlands side? Because they looked a mile off it as well at Euro. I know Van Gaal has come in, change of formation. They're going to be much more defensively resolute. But is there enough in, the, into this, in this Netherlands side that you're like, yeah, going up against two competitive teams in Ecuador and Senegal, the Netherlands are the team to go on um, to, to absolutely win this group. And the thing that's interesting for me is... If you win this group, there's you know there's a carrot being dangled. You get second place in Group B, which could be a weaker opposition as well. So there's incentive for these teams to go out there and play for the three points and not just settle for draws. Um, that's kind of my overview on the group. I'm not sure if you have anything to add, Jake. No, I, I just on the Netherlands point, I do think that they they're trending in a really positive direction. The Van Gaal, um, I think that playing against teams that maybe, I mean, Qatar, we expect will probably sit deep and try and play on the counter against the Netherlands because they'll be the inferior opponent. Senegal generally like to keep things tight anyway. We saw that through AFCON. Um, I think they kept pretty much was it five games, five clean sheets or something like that, or maybe conceded just the once. So um, I think that plays to the hands of the Netherlands because I do think that they've got a lot of really good flair players um, in forward areas that can break down a, a deep line block. Um, they're a very high scoring team as well, which, I think if they get the early goal, that, that really puts them in a promising position in all of those three matches. Um, I think it was 33 goals in uh, World Cup qualifying, 14 goals in six games in the Nations League for the Netherlands. So they're not shy when they're going forward. And, and I think that that will play, in, well, that, that should really force the, the, the group to open up a little bit. Uh, anything else to add, gentlemen? Either Simon or Andrew? I would Simon? just say that I think, I think there's some really good managers in this group, which I think will be interesting to watch. Felix Sanchez of Qatar, I think, is a really, really good manager. Uh, and I like Ali Ossice at Senegal. So um, I think, for me, Ecuador and Holland are probably the two favourites. But I think the the smart tactical approach of those two coaches, they'll ha I think Senegal um, have a set system, but I think Ecuador adjust a lot to the opposition they face. So I think you'll see a lot of kind of tactical games and stuff in this group, which will be interesting, because I think it's quite an even group. Uh, obviously, Holland are the, the favourites, but I... I I wouldn't rule out Qatar despite uh, recent results. So I think it's going to be a really interesting group from a tactical perspective, this one.
Uh, Senegal and Ecuador both coming in at plus 108 to advance on Pinnacle. So a plus number, you favor one over the other, based on what we had to say, then you know where to go on and make that play.